Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. It is great to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Amen. It is great. If you are joining us online, thank you for coming and joining us. I know we're running just a little bit late this morning, but, you know, that's okay. God's not late. God's here, and uh, God is ready for us just to spend time with him and to meet with him today. And I hope you're ready, too. God always shows up in this place. God always moves, and uh, I know that God's got something really good in store for us today. So, I mean, he's a good God, so he's always got something good in store for us, right? Yeah. yeah. So... Uh, would you join me in prayer this morning as we just ask God's presence to, to be in this place and, and his blessing to be upon this service this morning. Father God, we, we come before you. God, we come before you, God, with, with our hearts wide open. God, we're here. We're ready to meet with you. We're ready to be with you. God, I'm so thankful and grateful that no matter what I face in life, no matter my past, I can always come to you can always meet with you. So God, today, in this place, right here, right now, God, we meet with you. We come before you, and we just ask, God, that you would embrace us today. God, that you would allow us to feel your love and to feel your grace in this place. Lord, would you move and have your way? In Jesus' mighty name. Would you stand and join us in worship wherever you are? And just a heads up, we may have a few technical difficulties on the screen, but we will have the words, and you know the songs, so let's praise God this morning.
Blessed be your glorious name.
so high, I'm so So high, so deep, so great that it's overwhelming. So high, so deep, so great is your love. Give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Give us clean hands. Give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Give us clean hands, give us pure hearts, let us not lift our souls to another, give us clean hands, give us pure hearts, let us not lift our souls to another O oh God of Jacob O oh God of Just take another moment and just love on the Lord. Take, on, take a moment and just receive his love for you. Father, we love you. Oh, Lord God, we love you. We want to thank you, Lord, that your love endures all things. Your love never fails. It never gives up. It never walks out on us your love oh your great love thank you Jesus for a great love thank you Jesus for a great love that was not just words but it was works thank you Jesus for a great love that produces great faith and great hope thank you thank you for reaching to us right where we are and for bringing us to where you want us to be. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I pray today for those that are maybe not feeling the love of God as much as they want to, I pray, Lord, that you would do a work in their life to help them to know you greater and stronger, better and closer. Pray, God, that you would rush their spirits with your heavenly love. I pray, Father, that you would overwhelm them and baptize them afresh and anew with a glorious spirit. Pray, Holy Spirit, that you would move in and that you would evict doubt and evict fear. Pray, Holy Spirit, that you would take up residence in us, in this church, in this service, in our hearts, in our, in our minds. I know the mind can be a battlefield, but I know that the battle is not ours, it's the Lord's. And the same God that created us and created our mind knows how to speak to us with eternity in mind and eternity in our hearts, Father. 
Help us to recognize your voice and recognize when your Holy Spirit is dealing with us. Help us, Lord, to be aware of your presence and aware that you are with us. Help us to stand on the promise and operate in the promise that said you will never leave us and you will never forsake us. Lord, we are aware that we're two or three are gathered together in your name. There you are in our midst. We are aware that you are inhabited in the praises of your people. We are aware, Lord, that you are with us today, reaching us right where we are, reaching us, Lord, reaching and moving and blessing and healing and helping and stirring and loving and increasing faith. You're here, Lord. You're here. You're right where we are. And I want to thank you for it, that we can cry out, Emmanuel. God with us. We, we can cry out that you are here with us. We're not walking this alone. We're not going through this dark season alone. You're right here with us. You're leading us. You're guiding us. You're protecting us. You're keeping us. You're, you're watching over us. Lord, I give you praise. Sanctify us to know that. Set us apart, God, to be that. Lord, we love you, 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 we love you. We love you, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, God. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Oh, it's good to be in worship with you, church. Good to be here with you. Now I want us to do something that will help us practice being the church. Raise your hand if you have a prayer request, if you have a need. Now keep it raised, keep it raised. And here's why I want you to do this. Usually I say every head bow and every eye closed, right? Now I want you looking around. I want you looking around. I want you to find somebody's hand that's raised. Somebody's hand who's saying, I need God. I need God to do something. I need God to heal. I need God to, to touch one of my loved ones, whatever it is. Now, now, close your eyes. Close your eyes. Holy Spirit, reveal to them who you need to pray for. Reveal to them. And I pray that there be somebody's hand that was raised that was around you. That image is burned in your mind. And I pray. Pray that the Holy Spirit does so. Because we're going to practice being the church. We're going to pray for one another. Somebody's hand stuck out to you. Somebody's face stuck out to you when you looked around to see who all needed prayer. I want you to pray for them right now. Come on, right now. Right now. Be the church. You, you got up. You, got, you, you took a shower, I hope. You got dressed. You looked all pretty and nice and smelly good. You decided to, to come to church. You might as well be the church. If you did all of that, you might as well be the church. So let's do it. Let's pray for one another right now. Come on, pray right now. From the fruit of your lips, pray for them. Pray for them like you wish somebody would pray for you. Pray for them. Lift them up. Encourage them. Pray for them. Wrap your love around them. Pray for them. Father, let us be the church. Let us be the church, Lord, we pray. We pray for one another. We pray for our brothers. We pray for our sisters. Lord, we have faith in knowing and believing that if we call upon the name of the Lord, Salvation is at hand, and we pray that you would move in salvation power. You would break the darkness in their life. You would break the depression in their life. You would break the, the, the bondage in their life. I pray, Lord, that you bring healing. If, if Jesus' saving power can bring healing, then I pray that, that healing, 
healing power would rise. It would rise in our compassion that we have for one another, in our love and our desire to see the Holy One of God uh, the Holy One of all creation that to see Him move and change hearts and change lives forever. Change minds. Lord, we pray, we pray, we pray. We pray for one another. We pray for each other. Lord, hands that were raised are, are people crying out and reaching for help. Lord, I ask that You be their strength and be their help today. Be with them today in a supernatural way. Be with them, God, in an amazing way. Be with them, Lord. Be with them, Jesus. Lord, be with them. Be with them. Open their eyes to see You and their ears to hear You. Open their hearts, Lord God, to receive You even more. Father, I pray for even all those that are online that if, if they need a touch, if their home needs to be just saturated with the Holy Spirit, I pray that you do so today, you do so now. I pray, oh God, that you create an atmosphere that's conducive for your glory to move in their life, oh God. Father, we love you, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, you're worthy. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. You're worthy, oh, God, you're worthy. Oh, God, you're worthy. Holy. Holy. Holy are you, God. Lord God Almighty who was, who is, who is to come, the great God who sits upon His throne high and lifted up. Beside Him, beside You, Lord, there is no other. You sit in complete sovereignty and control. That there's no chaos below you that you can't speak order into. That's how you make all things work together for the good. Father, we trust you, Lord. We trust you, Jesus. We trust you, Jesus. God, we trust you. We need you, Lord. We need you. Oh, if you love him this morning, say amen. Amen, amen, amen. Give God a big hand of praise this morning. Amen. Amen. You know, the book of Revelation gives us a gives us a wonderful perspective inside a crazy story. <laughs> and it's the wonderful perspective of no matter how crazy things get, no matter how crazy things seem, no matter how hard it may seem, there's a higher level and a higher plane to be at. And when you are at that level, will you see Him more clearly than you see the mess? There's worship and there's praise. There's a reason why worship is found all through the book of Revelation. Oh, there's, there, there, there's, there's craziness all through the book of Revelation. But there's also worship all through the book of Revelation. I don't know about you, but that tells me a lot about life. There's craziness all through life, but there is worship. There is worship from those that are close to Him and want to know Him and want to see Him more clearly. So I hope that's in your heart today. I hope worship is in your heart. I hope knowing Him is in your heart. I hope that you are finding moments throughout 
the week and the days that you're taking time just to worship Him. It's creating that atmosphere in your heart and your spirit to see Him more clearly. That's what we're going to talk about later today. I'm also going to talk about how Jesus Christ Himself has taken on the responsibility of interceding for us with a compassion and a love that goes beyond what we can ask or think. I know a lot of times religion wants to put all of the burden on our shoulders to be perfect. Well, I failed that a long time ago. That burden has fallen upon Jesus Christ today to intercede for us, to love us, to cleanse us, to sanctify us, to work in our lives. Now, do we have a call to follow in His footsteps? Absolutely. But how many of you give God praise that His footsteps are going before you? Amen. We're going to go ahead and take up our offering today. Take time for that, then we'll jump on into the Word of God. I do have a couple announcements in just a few minutes, but for those of you that, are already, that have already given in whatever way, mail or, or online or whatever, thank you so dearly, thank you. So, 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 so thank you. So very much. We love you. We're here for you. For those of you that are giving today, thank you so much. We appreciate you. We're here for you. Thank you for giving to the church and believing. You know, the fact that you're giving, it says that you're believing and trusting that God's going to do something amazing. You're believing in this. So thank you. You're believing in what God wants to do, what God is moving us forward into. So thank you so very much. If you have your offering, would you just hold that in your hand? And would you, first of all, let's just be thankful. Let's be grateful that we're able to give, whether it's a dollar or whether it's so much more. We're able to give this because you've given to us first, Lord. Oh, Lord, you've given us first. The, 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 the principle that you teach us to live by, give and it shall be given back to you. Oh, it's a principle you set up, which means that you have already given knowing that you're going to get so much in return, more than just money, but praise and worship and love and offerings of our life. So, Father, we are thankful. We are thankful that we have life today and we have it more abundant. We are thankful that we're able to work. We're able to do whatever it is that you've called us to do. We're able to get up. And get dressed. We're able to take steps forward. We're able to, to do all of this because you, God, have blessed us with strength, with life, with health, with the abilities that we have, with gifts, with callings. You've made a way, Lord, so many times. Thank you. And we trust you, Lord. We trust you with every dollar. We trust you, God, that you would take this, and you will bless it, and you will multiply it, and you will do amazing things with it because you are God, and that's what you do. So we expect nothing less as we put this not into a church, but we put this into your hands. We put this into your hands, and may the church remain in your hands to do your will according to your plan, in your way, by the authority of your word. Lord, we love you. Thank you. And we pray, God, that every single dollar that's able to be given would be sown into good ground and would spring up and bear a harvest of fruit that we wouldn't have room enough to receive. Father, we give you praise in Jesus' name. If you love the name of Jesus, say amen. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, everybody. Appreciate you being here online or here. Either way, we're glad that you're part of us any way that you can be. Thank you so very much. We love you. We're here for you. We're praying for you. Um, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn with me to the book of John, chapter 17. We're going to jump into the Word of God today. i um, going to catch up and recap just for a minute, then we'll jump in to the, the, the study for the day. And the study for the day is really focused mostly on Jesus and his prayer in the garden here and realizing that this is actually what he's praying for, what he prayed for believers then and what he's continuing to pray for in believers now. Um, but as you're turning there and getting things ready before I get too deep, and, and usually, I, I usually I mess up and I, I skip over announcements because I get all excited about what I'm going to preach about. But uh, just a couple of announcements. First of all, I believe, is it November the 1st? November the 1st. It's, I can't believe that. This, is that crazy? We're about to say November. I mean, October just, whoop, it just, I don't know where this stuff goes. Where does it go? It's got to go the same place that my socks are going. Because I know I put two socks in that washing machine and only get one out. I don't know where that other dude is going, but it's, it's all going somewhere. I don't know where it's going, but it's going. But we are about to say November. We're about to start singing Christmas carols, y'all. Some of you already are. I mean, raise your hand if you already listen to some Christmas music. All right. There you go. All right. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> Yeah, that's all. That's all good. That's, that's what we love. We love to know that Jesus is still with us. Amen. All right. So uh, November the first, uh, that that evening, uh, we are going to have not just a worship night, even though that's that's still the essence of what we want to do. Uh, we're also going to have a very special moment of prayer for our country and for the vote that's going to be coming up for the government, just for for all of the just. The stuff that's going to be coming, unfolding within the next few weeks. So I think it's a very appropriate time that we're going to be praying for that specifically. We'll also, of course, take time to worship and in the midst of all of that. But uh, that we're going to have a very specific time of prayer for that. It's a prayer service. Uh, we maybe want to call it a prayer service for that. And asking that God's will be done and asking that he forgive us, forgive me for, for ever getting it wrong. Because I know sometimes we do as people. Um, but for just stepping in and doing exactly what Second Chronicles 7.14 says. If my people who are called by my name will do this, will humble themselves and repent and pray, turn from their ways, he might do something. I mean, it's just a chance, like 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 twenty percent chance of rain, right? It might happen, it might not, right? It's not how God's promises works. He will heal our land. Well, I don't know about you, but every day I wake up, I look out there, I see a land needs healing. I see people that need healing. So we are going to take time. If you can't make it, I'm still going to ask you. That night to pray, that evening sometime to pray. We want to encourage you to be here, definitely. Uh, it's going to be special. It's going to be different. Uh, we're going to have a prayer service for that. Um, but in whatever way you can, be in prayer about that starting now. Be Hopefully you, you haven't waited, but you've already been praying about it. But really, really be praying about it. That's part of our job as the church in the body of believers. So we are going to do that. That's November the 1st, Sunday night at 5 o'clock. All right, Sunday night, 5 o'clock, November the 1st. We're going to get that kicked off, get that going. So, um, Also, um, of course, most of you have heard by now, most of you know by now. If you, if you haven't, here's a little bit of news. Of course, uh, Brother Cleo, my, my grandpa, he passed away uh, last week. He, he, he transferred from, from this world into the next. He, he, he left this, his old broken vessel down here, and he gained something much, much greater. And uh, what an honor, what a privilege of 95 years of serving a wonderful God. Because um, I think his whole life, that's all he's ever known. He even woke up as a child. He, uh, he had uh, fever and almost died as a child. And uh, when he woke up, came back, in some cases, he said, came back to life. 
he actually woke up speaking in a heavenly language, and that's really what got his dad and family back into church and back into going and believing, and I'm a, I'm a fruit of that. I told you I was a fruit. <laughs> I'm, I'm a product of that, uh, so very thankful, so very thankful that I had a man uh, like that to, to leave a legacy like that for, for me and something that will continue to go through my kids and and if we stay long enough, grandkids and all of that stuff, I don't know. This whole world can last that much longer. But, um, but he did. He, he, he transitioned. Yeah, he, he moved to a new neighborhood, and he and Grandma are back fussing at each other again. <laughs> uh, she probably went shopping in the mall up there somewhere, and he fussed at her because she spent too much money. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> His service, his visitation is tomorrow uh, from 6 to 8, and the service is Tuesday at 2. Everybody is welcome to be there that can possibly be there. Also, um, we're going to have a meal for the family right here at the church immediately following the service. We'll we'll go to the cemetery, but following that. So probably about 4 o'clock as best as we can tell. So Tuesday at about 4 o'clock, we will have a meal here, and we invite everybody to come out and eat. He, he, we're going to have some moon pies probably there because he loved his moon pies. But, uh, we're going to have just some good food, good time, good fellowship. We'll try to keep the social distancing thing as best as we possibly can. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll figure all, I'll get all of that figured out. But if you would like to come, Come on, come be a part of that. If you would like to help out with that, just please let me know after service. There's obviously some things that we're going, we're going to need help with as a church to make that uh, take place. So if you'd like to help out, please let me know. Just catch me after service, text me, call me even afterwards if you forget, whatever. Um, but we are going to need some help in serving and getting some of that stuff out there. So um, so again, that, that will be Tuesday. The service is at 2, the the meal will be at probably about four o'clock here at the church. If you have any questions, feel free to tag me. And uh, yes, it's it's bittersweet. Um, it's bittersweet to be able to have the honor of doing his service and have the honor of standing up um, for him and giving a message from him to his family and from God to his family. Such a bittersweet moment where yes, you're grieving and your heart's broken because you are missing that that crooked grin of his, and and you're missing uh, missing talking to him or yelling at him lately because he he was too stubborn to get hearing aids, uh, but missing him, but knowing knowing that this is it's not over. This is not over. We're all going to see him again, and we're all going to get a big hug from him again, and and in the next time that we see him. Everything will be just right. Amen? Amen. And that's the crescendo of our faith. That's why we live through all of this, so that that we know that this is not it. This is not Even Apostle Paul himself said, if if I had hope only in this life, I would be miserable. This is the Apostle Paul who has seen and done incredible things. But even he understood that there's more to this, and it's not over whenever this world says it's over, that God has actually got way more in store for us, and it's just beginning when we step over to that other side. And that other side, this happens to be where Jesus Christ himself is interceding for us and praying for us. Uh, Romans chapter 8 says he is at the right-hand side of the Father interceding and praying for us. To think about that, that is amazing that that at any point in time that I need help and I hit my knees and I cry out for help and I say, God, I need you. Jesus is like, I already know. I'm already praying for that. I saw you were going to need me before you ever got to this point, And I have already been interceding for you just as he did when he told Peter, when he said, Peter, Peter, I'm praying for you. And Peter looks at Jesus and says, what do you mean? He said, I'm praying for you because the enemy would try to sift you as wheat. But I'm praying that your faith would remain and that it would it would stay full and it would accomplish what it needs to accomplish to know. That's incredible to know that he's already gone before us and is praying for us and interceding for us in a very special way. 
And I've always wondered, well, what is it that you are praying for? What is it, Jesus, that you pray for? Are there anything that I need to know specifically that you've already gone before me and have prayed for? Well, we just happen to find that. We just happen to find that. John chapter 17 is where we find that, him praying in the garden. There are five things that he is praying for. Five things in particular he prays for, and, and it kind of coincides with what we were talking about last week with, with the tabernacle worship, and as we walk through the, the worship of the tabernacle, we have now come into the tent of meeting. It is into the place where, where it's called the holy place. It's a place where the, the, the service before the Lord takes place by, the, by his uh, servants, by his priesthood, by his ministers, that they're serving before God just as you and I should be doing every single day, serving before God. And it's in that place that, that the very first thing you're going to notice as you open the, the curtain and you, as you walk in is the smell and the aroma of what is burning on the altar of incense. It might not necessarily be the very first furniture piece you see, but it is the very first thing that will just smack you right in the face is the strong smell of incense that's carried and covering everything there in that place. And that incense, that smell of incense, it represents prayer. It represents worship and praise and prayer. It represents intercession. In fact, there we found out there were five specific things that they put on the altar of incense to make that smell. And those five, those five specific things was, was uh, five sweet spices we found in Exodus, uh, stacked and, and galbanum and frankincense and salt and things like that. Well, those five things represent what five things Jesus prays for, for us and his, uh, his believers. John chapter 17 Verses 6 through 19. If you got it, say, I got it. There you go. Amen. <laughs> I have manifested your name to the men whom you've given me out of the world. They are yours. Ooh, that's good. You gave them to me. And they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. For I have given to them the words which you have given me. And they have received them and have known surely that I came forth from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. Do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me. For they are yours. That's twice. Amen. And all mine are yours. And yours are mine. And I'm glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you. Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me. That they may be one as we are one. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept. And none of them is lost except the son of perdition. That's Judas, right? Everybody remembers that. Then the scripture might, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to you and these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy. Whoa, 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 whoa. That they may have what? Everybody say, my joy, Jesus' joy, not just our joy, not just what we want at it, but that they may have his joy. How would you like to have the joy of Jesus? Okay, well, guess what? He's praying for you to have that, and that, and that it might be fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Oh, but I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. For they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world 
and for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. Holy Father, we need you. Holy Father, I thank you that you've made a way. Even before I see what that way is, the way, the truth, and the life is praying for me, interceding for us. At the right hand of your side, Holy Father, praying, interceding, calling out, crying out, and lifting up our names day and night. It's not just that we thank you for nothing. We thank you for an incredible something. That that way is being made because the way is praying for us. That's why we can call you Waymaker, Jesus. So, Father, I pray that this service, this day, this sermon, this lesson, our worship, our praise, our attention, our awareness, may it all come together to glorify you. Jesus, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. I uh, have tried to, to work on my health a little bit more, a little better. And with that, I take quite a few walks and, and quite a few jogs and, and uh, quite a few what I call woggles, which means it's a half jog, half walk, half jiggle through the neighborhood. And I have a perfect neighborhood for it. I really do. It's it's just that there are there are more hills in the neighborhood than I like. But I've learned if I just look down and I just keep stepping, <laughs> that I will eventually get up that hill. And then when I get up that hill, that there's always a place where it flattens off and goes down the hill, and I can take a little bit of a breather. And but then here comes another hill, because that's all we know is living around hills. This is Arkansas. I'm a hillbilly, I guess you would say. And so what do I do? I just look down at my feet, and I am actually listening to, to either worship music or some preacher or some teacher or something. I'm listening to maybe even an, an audio book. Uh, I've been, been listening to Pursuit of God by A.W. Tozer. been listening to that. So I was listening to that the other day, and, and I was just, just trying to step my way through it. You all know how that is, right? Maybe not in jogging, but maybe in life. You're just trying to step your way through it. Just trying to just just look down and one more step and one more step and one more step and one more step. And the next thing you know, you'll get to that destination. You'll get to that place. Well, the other day, um, actually, it was it was Friday morning. I was I was taking off kind of early. It was a little chilly. So kind of had all my had had a little more a little more. Uh, warmer clothes on and as, as I was jogging off and getting going I I looked up and here is this this hill that that of course I always have to jog up and I said okay well here we go again I look at this hill and I'm not in good enough shape just to take it in stride so I just I just just look down and, and I'm listening and I'm one step one step one step one step and I happen to hear another pitter pat of some feet and th there is a lot of people in the neighborhood that do jog, and, and, and I've learned that whenever I'm jogging and someone else is jogging, it's a lot harder because you have to suck it up, and you have to pull it in, and you have to act like you know what you're doing. You all know what I'm talking about because you don't always have to feel good, but you got to look good. you got to look like you know what you're doing, even though you ain't got a clue, even though you're about to die, even though you, I'm good, you're, good morning, good morning, it's a great morning, and yeah, it's a great morning, and they're like, whew, they take off, and you're like, you sorry, dog. Well, I was jogging and I hear the pitter pat of other feet and, and I look over there and there's this young, young boy of about maybe 15 ish, it looked like. And he was all he, he was he didn't even have a shirt on. It's like 50 degrees outside. He didn't even have a shirt on. And as he's jogging, things weren't moving. And man, I just, I, I cursed him. And, and no, <laughs> I thought about it, but I didn't. I just looked at him and at first I was envious thinking, yeah, I remember those days. And he had these these headphones on. They were Beats by Dr. Dre, and he had big old headphones on. He had his phone in his hand, and and as I looked over there, again, I'm I'm like this, all right. And he's just high state. He's just, whoo, whoo, 
I mean, he just got that stride going, them legs are stretched out. He's not even breathing hard, and I don't know how long. He's probably, I've been going for like five minutes, and I'm about to die. He's probably been going for two hours, and he's just, you know, weighs about a buck 30, soaking wet, just, just going. And, and he looks at me, and he gives me that nod like, see you later, pops. And he, choom, he takes off. And here I'm just, just, just flopping and woggling. And as he looks at me, he has that smirk on his face. He says, yeah, I'll see you later. And just, woof. At first, I thought, trip him, Jesus. <laughs> but I didn't. I didn't say it. I kind of just, okay, well, I'm just going to do my thing, right? And so as I began to look down, I noticed that when he looked up and went like this, those beats by Dr. Dre fell off his head and boom, hit the, hit the ground. And they broke. And he, his high step, and he, whoosh, and he turned, whoosh, his face went whoosh, white. Because here's these $300 pair of headphones that's now broke on the road. And as he's bending over and picking them up and looking like I'm in trouble, here I am, right, just going right past him, going, I never saw him again. <laughs> I went on and turned the corner, and actually I was kind of looking for him just to see if where, was he God waiting for him to pass me again, but he disappeared. <laughs> never saw him again. <laughs> didn't see him yesterday, didn't see him today. Never saw him again. I don't know where he went. All I know is is that it's really important. You may not be striding like you think you need to be. You may not be doing as great as you think you ought to be doing, but you just keep stepping. <laughs> just keep going. Just take your next step. Just do the next right thing. Just do the next right thing. Just keep going. Why? Because you have a heavenly father that will never stop praying for you. Just keep going. I know you may be facing a mountain. You may be facing a hill, but just keep going. And the enemy, sometimes he'll gloat and he'll try to rub it in your face like you're not going fast enough or big enough or good enough or hard enough. And he tries to gloat and he gives you that smirk. And then the next thing you know, he's broke. He's broke. When Jesus moves, it breaks. And he disappears. And you just keep going. You just keep going. Jesus has given us a promise. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'll never leave you. Never leave you. We find in First, in first Corinthians 13, the love chapter, it said love endures everything. Would you replace that word love with Jesus? Because that is love. In fact, go to that chapter, I dare you, and read all of those things about love and, re, and circle love and put Jesus over the top of that word because it, that's Jesus Christ. He is love for us and he endures all things and he is in all things and he works with all things. He helps us. He, in, he is never failing, never giving up. That's Jesus. And that's still him. That is still him. It's not past tense him, it's still him. Because I know a lot of people that read the scripture and they're like, oh, if, if I could just have Jesus show up in my life, then everything else would be okay. He still can. He still can. Why? Because he still is. And he always will be. He always will be. Praying, interceding for us. Sending the Holy Spirit to move in our life whenever we feel like we can't go any further. The Holy Spirit encourages us and picks us up and strengthens us and helps us and gets us to where He wants us to go. And when the enemy wants to gloat, the Holy Spirit will knock his headphones off. And you just keep right on stepping. And how many of you realize that sometimes you have to come to the place where you realize you may not be where you want to be yet, but you sure are a long way from where you used to be. And never, ever forget that. 
Sometimes I have to remind myself of that. It may not always be where I think I want to be yet, but I know I'm a long way from where I used to be. So as he is praying for us, we find here five specific things that he prays for. Specifically for his people. Three times we read, they're yours, Lord. They're yours. You are not even your own now. You are his. And that's a good thing. That's a good way because it is in him you find your true identity. You find your true self in the one who created you and knit you together and pulled from his own soul to give you a soul, created you in his image, knit you together in his mother's womb, and created you with a call and a purpose that only he, the designer, the creator, would know. So it's like he, as he created you, he hid the key to who you are within himself and then gave you the opportunity through grace and through mercy and through intercession to say, come find it. Come find it. It's, I've got it. Seek me. Come find it. I love that song, O God of Jacob. It comes from Psalm 24, to seek your face. This is the generation that seeks you. Oh, God of Jacob. And I know you've probably heard this before, but it bears repeating. It's worth mentioning again. Why does it say, oh, God of Jacob and not, oh, God of Israel? Because remember, Jacob's name was changed to Israel when he wrestled with the Lord and he got with God and said, I'm not letting go until you bless me. And the angel of the Lord touched him and knocked his hip out of socket. And yet he's limping, but he's still stepping he's limping but he's still holding and he said I will not let you go and he said you have now prevailed with God and with men and I change your name from Jacob which is deceiver to Israel which is my prince but later he's still known as the God of Abraham Isaac and why why not Abraham Isaac and Israel and why does it say in Psalm 24, which was written much, much later than that moment he had with the angel of the Lord? Why? Because God knows we're still going to struggle and we're still going to wrestle. But it is in the struggling and the wrestling that we grab a hold of God in that prayer, in that intercession. He doesn't want you necessarily to feel like you have to be perfect, but you have to be his. And the very first prayer he prays is found in verses 6 through 10. We've already read it and we're running out of time, so let me get through this quickly. The very first prayer he prays is that he has manifested the name of God, revealed God to his disciples. That lets me know something, that that's what he's praying for you right now. That you would have the ability to be able to see God work in your life. You wouldn't be blind to what God is doing. When Jesus prays through those few verses, verses 6 through 10, if you're taking notes or you want to go back and look later or you want to look now, that's fine, whatever, you don't have to listen. But when he's talking about, I've done this, I've worked this, I, I, I've done this, I've worked this ministry. This is the end of his earthly ministry just about. And, and he said, I've worked this out for the last three to three and a half years with my disciples. And everything I've done and everything I've been through and everything I've brought your disciples through, I've done so, so that your name would be revealed to them. That says to me that everything Jesus has been doing for the last three and a half years with his disciples has been so important because he's been positioning both himself and them in a place and in a way that they would be able to see very clearly God working in their life. That there were things that Jesus took his disciples through that they may not have realized it at first. But everything he took his disciples through was, was for a purpose and for a reason of seeing how God can work through faith. He turns to his disciples and said, feed the multitude. Jesus wasn't dumb. He knows math. He counts, he's already counted every hair on your head. He knows math. 
He knows that, that there's just a little bit of food can't feed everybody. He's not dumb. He knows what's in his bank account. He turns to Judas and they say, what's in the account? Oh, we got about $25.18. And another, one's, another one who's really smart chimes in and says, yeah, Jesus, that's not enough to feed everybody here. No kidding. Thank you, Captain Obvious. We got that. Jesus wasn't asking for their permission. Jesus was setting them up to see something absolutely amazing happen. Do you think maybe that that's what God's doing in your life right now, that God is actually positioning you and working you and pulling you and leading you in places and in ways that he is setting you up to see him do something amazing? And some of you wonder why you're still here. Your jog may not be pretty, but you're still stepping. You're still here. Why? Because he is positioning you just like he's positioning himself to meet you at a place at a time to show you and reveal to you his glory. Moses had no idea that bush was going to be burning when he when that stinking lamb ran off. Put yourself in Moses' shoes for just a second or sandals, flip flops, whatever he was wearing. Put yourself in his, his flip-flops. And he's just tending his sheep. And as he's kind of get lost in thought, because you know how we are as humans, right? You, you get kind of repetitive in something, and you kind of wonder, wait a minute, you kind of get lost on other things. How many of you have ever been driving, and then you got to a certain place, and you're like, I don't even remember how I got here. I hope I was awake, <laughs> right? Y'all ever done that? It's just so repetitive. It's just, and Moses just kind of, here we are again, just doing the same thing for the last 40 years, tending these sheep. Here it is. And then, I, you just, well, let me at least count the sheep. One, two, three, 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 three. Oh, dude, I'm missing one. Man, Jethro's going to be mad. I'm going to have to find that. And don't you know there's part of him who's like, ah, I've got to go look for this stinking sheep. Y'all act like you don't act like that whenever you lose something. I gotta look for this stinking sheep. Right? So you gotta do all this work of getting all these sheep all protected and corralled, and then, then you gotta go and find this thing, and you gotta go over all these hills and rocks and mountains, go looking everywhere in the wilderness. He had no idea that God Himself said, Here, boy, come here, sheep. <laughs> And led the sheep astray because he had a moment to show Moses his holiness all prepared beforehand. Jesus right now is praying. And he's praying for you to be positioned in such a way that you're going to see his glory move. This is why you have to be very aware, spiritually minded, about God, what you're doing in this earth, what you're doing right now, what you're doing in my life. That's why you have to pay attention spiritually to what's going on. That's why it says over and over in Scripture, don't fall asleep. That's why in this very moment, he went back to his disciples and he said, wake up three times. Wake up. Wake up. And we got a lot of Christians that are asleep at the wheel. They just kind of float through life and hoping everything will be okay. It's more than that. Jesus is interceding for them right now. He's interceding for you to make all of this work together. And I would dare say that there's an appointment set up for you that you don't even know about yet. And you're going to walk into it. And when you do, you're going to be like, God, you are so awesome. God has awesome appointments and Jesus is praying for you to meet them, meet those appointments. Can you say amen to that? All right, we got to move on. Second prayer. He says, keep them through your name. Keep them, protect them, watch over them. Keep them through your name. Proverbs 18 and 10. We have that. I can't even see Jill with the big TV over there. Proverbs 18 and 10. 
It says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. The, the name of the Lord, God knows who his own is. They're his now. The same as the bride takes the name of the groom. It's the same way of saying, Jesus is saying that you are his now. You've taken on his name and his identity now. That's why in the rebirth, you have now spiritual fruit to bear and not worldly fruit to bear. You now have fruits of the Spirit operating in your life. There are fruits of the Spirit operating in your life because they're his fruit now operating in your life. That's how you can have peace that passes all understanding. It's not your peace. It's His. And He's working it through you. That's how you can have the joy of the Lord being your strength. It's not your joy. It's His. Now, why is that important? Some people might say, well, that don't sound good. I want it. No, it's, it's important that it's His because if it's His, it can never be taken away. It can never be taken out of his hand. It can never be done away with. That joy, that peace, that patience, that gentleness, that meekness, that kindness, it's going to live forever, and that means it's forever going to operate in your life. It's his. See, if it was ours, it would fade away. But it's his. And he's giving it to us in such an incredible and wonderful way. He says, keep them through your name. You have his name now to protect you. His name, it's so important. Why is it going through his name? Because it's through the name that is above every other name. That you can be saved and sealed by the Holy Spirit. Ephesians says 4.30, sealed until the day of redemption. You're his. Jesus said it this way. Ain't nobody going to pluck you out of my hand. Ain't no work of the enemy. Ain't no work of this world. And nothing's going to, nobody is going to pluck you out of my hand. You're his now. And every day he's interceding and praying that you would be protected. Isn't that incredible? That means if anything has come into your life, it's come into your life only by him saying it was okay. And if he said it's okay, it means it's not going to be for your demise. It's going to be for your victory. Okay? He's praying for you. He says, protect them. That was the second prayer. The third prayer. Third one is so that they may have joy fulfilled in themselves. That they may have his joy. Verse 13 says, I'm praying that they may have my joy. And that is so important that it's his joy and not just our joy. It's this joy that is based on and comes from the Heavenly Father down to us. It is his joy that he's releasing to us. That's his joy that he's giving to us. And it's the same joy that took Jesus Christ himself through the hardest time of his life. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the he endured. Not just a little heartache or, or a little stump of a toe. He endured the cross. He endured the hardest day of his life. The worst thing his flesh would ever have to endure. How did he get through it? Through his joy. How are you going to get through the hardest time of your life? Not your joy. His joy. See, a lot of times we try to conjure up our joy, and sometimes it falls flat. But this is where we have to really learn to trust and rely on Him who can give us the joy of the Lord and it then becomes our strength. 
Nehemiah 8 and 10. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Why joy? Not, 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 not peace or why not that? Why joy? Because he wants you to enjoy the fruit of his labor. That's why Jesus and only Jesus could say, come unto me. Come unto me, all who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It's his joy. And anytime you need his joy, you don't have to beg for it. You don't have to scrape. You don't have to borrow. You don't have to steal. You don't have to make it up. All you have to do is realize he's already praying for you to have it. And come into agreement with that. And trust him that he knows how to give you the joy that you need. Prayer number four. It's found in verses 14 through 16 and says that and this is a little bit of a hard one because I know sometimes it's easier to pray one thing than it is another. And Jesus prays, don't take them out of the world, Lord. Now, he just got through saying the world hated him. <laughs> Thanks, Lord. He just got through saying, I know the world hates them, but I'm asking you, Lord, I'm asking you, God, not to take them out of the world. Oh, man, that would have been a whole lot easier. Right? Been a whole lot easier to just be like Enoch and whoop, I'm out of here. <laughs> anytime things get real, anytime you say enough is enough in the world, you can just say, I'm out of here, and you're translated. I'd be preaching to an empty house today. Right? Because we'd all have that feeling in the moments of time where we pray, God, this is this is tough to get through. But I've often found out that it is harder sometimes to walk through the storm than it is to pray, God, just get me out of it. And it requires more faith. And faith will grow more when you're in the storm walking it out than you just praying, God, take me out of it. That was the whole point in Peter walking on the water. The whole point in Peter walking on the water is the very first time the storm came up, they hid in the boat. And when they hid in the boat and they woke Jesus up, Jesus asked them a question, where did you put your faith? Did you put it in the boat? Did you put it in the storm? Or did you put it in me? Right? So the next time they're caught in the same situation, Peter, he got it figured out, right? He said, I'm going to leave this boat because I tried that the first time. I'm going to leave this boat and I'm going to say, Jesus, if this is you, bid me to come onto the water. Now, mind you, this is the same water that all of the legion of demons were just cast into not just a few days before this. Where the pigs, they were casting the pigs, the pigs ran and drowned themselves in the water. So the demons are in this sea. That's part of the reason why they look and they see a ghost at first and they get a little bit afraid. Because they realize, uh-oh, this was the same place the pigs just went swimming in. Right? And they got a little bit afraid. But Peter says, hey, I'm learning. I'm learning. Jesus, if this is you, bid me to come. Jesus bids and says, come on out, big boy. Let's see what you got. Now, did Jesus have any idea that Peter would probably start sinking? Or do you think it kind of caught Jesus off guard? And he was like, oops. You know? And I left my lifeguard ring at the, back on the shore. Peter had no idea that while they're tossing and turning and rocking on the sea. Peter had no idea that while he is facing a great tempest coming against them. And they are rowing until their calluses bleed. And they're getting nowhere. And they're frustrated. And it's the middle of the night and they're tired. They just got through feeding 10,000 people. I don't know about you, but uh, that, that takes a lot of work. 
They're wore out. They're tired. They're frustrated. And now they're scared. And Peter had no idea that while all this is happening, Jesus Christ himself, go back and read it for yourself. Jesus Christ himself is up on the mountain watching over them in the dark of night, seeing them through all of the tempest, all of the darkness, and praying for them. That's why the Bible said Jesus was just going to walk on by except they called out for him. Did you notice that? Have you ever noticed that? that the Bible literally says that he was just going to go right on by. Like, Why would Jesus go right on by and see them in their struggle? Because Jesus had already been praying for them and he knew they were going to be all right. You let that sink in for a minute? Because some of you are racking your head against the wall, beating it, thinking, oh God, where are you at? And Jesus is like, it's going to be okay. I know it's going to be okay. Maybe that's not why you feel me as strong as you want to feel me. Because I have already seen what you're going to go through. I've already prayed it out. We've interceded. And you're going to be just fine. And so what now I'm doing is, is I'm working on your faith. But thank God when Peter cries out, Jesus just happened to be there right on time. How did he happen to be there right on time? Was it a coincidence? Or was it the fact he's watched you this whole time? He's seen every row. He's seen every tear. He's seen every struggle. He knows your calluses are bleeding. And it didn't stop him from reaching his hand down and getting your blood all over his good, clean, holy hand. Y'all are quiet, right? Y'all okay? Everybody say prayer number five because I'm hungry, right? Jesus didn't pray. Just get him out of all the hard stuff, Lord. No, he said, I'll pray that the evil one can't do anything to them. The destroyer can't destroy them. Death can't touch them until I say. Thousand may fall at one side and ten thousand at the other, but it shall not come near you. Angels will bear them up lest they dash dash their foot against a stone. He's praying for you. And I've often wondered how I came through something without a scratch or a scar. And I turned around and I, and I think, ooh, thank God. It's not by coincidence. Because he's interceding for you. And then prayer number five. This kind of is something that he prays before and at the end. But it's a prayer of sanctification. And he says two things about this. He says, let them be one as we are one. And then he goes on to say, sanctify them. Sanctify them. Okay? The word sanctify means holy. And when I say that, a lot of people are like, "Uh uh-oh, that leaves me out. Right? That's not what that word means, holy. It doesn't mean perfect, completely, one million percent perfect. What that means is completely dedicated to Him. You don't have to be perfect, but you got to be His. Does that make sense? You are set apart for a special purpose, and He's your special purpose, just like you're His special purpose. Okay? Just like, like just being set apart is part of His will for you. Well, His will for you is also that you are to be set apart for Him, made for one another to be one, just as He and, and just as Jesus and God, He said, are one. Okay? He said, sanctify them. Now, Matthew McConaughey said this one time in an addri- in a commencement address. He says that, you know what? Finding out your identity can be hard. And it can be. I remember going through that phase in life. And I still sometimes wonder who I am, okay? But as he's talking to them, he says, he gives them a hint. He gives them a piece of advice. And he says, first, take 
what you're not and eliminate all of that. And that will help you find out who you are. So first look at who you're not. And that piece of advice I think would work for us in this case of talking about sanctification. Because the enemy would beat you over the head and say, you dirty, rotten sinner, again you messed up. And we'll accept it. When that's not who we are anymore. We're not a dirty, rotten sinner anymore. Oh, we were. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Yes, we all were. But for those that have been justified freely through the grace of Jesus Christ and been believed in Him, sealed by the Holy Spirit, and now full of the redemption blood of Christ operating in our life, we are not a son of of, of perdition or a son of a disbeliever anymore, the son of the world anymore. We are not children of the world. We're now children of God. And we're looked at totally different. He treats us totally differently. Completely. Did you notice in this prayer, he says, I'm not praying for the world. And this is not a, this is not a nanana boo-boo thing. This is, I'm saying, I've separated them out. Where I treat my children completely special and completely different. Anybody can be that, but for those that have now chosen to be that, you're not a sinner anymore. You may, I didn't say you wasn't going to mess up. I didn't say you weren't going to trip and fall from time to time. But have you noticed that passage in Scripture where it says, though a crazy man falls seven times, he'll always get back up? Though a righteous man falls? It means he was righteous before he fell. He was God's before he fell. I'm not excusing sin. I'm not saying, well, you could do whatever you want. That's not the point. That's not the point. The point is, is that you're just doing everything you can to step the next step. And sometimes things will come in like a big old Labrador retriever and knock you out. <laughs> You have to ask Eli about that. Okay? And things happen. But guess what? As soon as you cry out, Daddy comes running. Why? Because you're his. You're his. And he wants you to be one, one with him, one with each other. He wants us all to be his. And he prays that you would be sanctified. That's why he gives us that work of the Holy Spirit in us to sanctify us, separate us, and make us his. Completely his. Brother Evan, can you come? Matthew chapter 23, verse 19. Jesus is talking to the religious folk. And he's trying to set them straight on what's more important. The money that's given to the church or the church itself. Because you see, they had a system that said, well, if I could just kind of pay enough money to the church that I'd be forgiven. (laughs) If I could just, just cover up enough of my bad stuff with a little bit of money, then I'll be looked at as a good person, just fine. And Jesus says, you missed the point. You missed the point. What sanctifies the gold? Is the gold sanctified in and of itself, or is the fact that the gold has been placed in the church, temple in their case? He goes on to say, What sanctifies the gift? Is it the the sacrifice? Is it that that sheep or that oxen or that dove? Is Is it the animal or is it the fact that that animal is laid upon a holy altar? 
the life of that animal is taken to a very precious place called the mercy seat. And in that place of mercy, life becomes sanctified again. So as you lay your life upon his mercy, you become sanctified. That means you may not have been perfect. And if you are, good for you. Good for you. Pray for me. Intercede for me. Because I need it. So I invite all of you to lay your life on his mercy. And let him intercede for you. Would you stand? Would you worship for just a minute? Those of you at home, would you do the same thing? Just, just right where you're at, would you lay your life on the mercy seat of God Almighty, found in this tent of meeting, found in this atmosphere of, of intercession and prayer and incense? Would you just lay your life upon His mercy right now? And let him intercede for you. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus. The Bible tells me so. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Come on, church, sing it to him. Jesus loves me. There you go. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you glad for that? Come on, how many of you are thankful for that? Then be sanctified by that truth. That's a truth that can never be denied. That's a greater reality and a greater truth that the enemy can never falsely talk away. Yes. Loves me. Yes. The Bible tells me so. The Bible tells me so. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand. That's why Jesus said, sanctify them by the truth. And there is no greater truth than that. That a man looks at his friends and says, what greater love can I have than this, that I lay down my life for you. So that I may intercede for you, so that my life may pray for you and provide for you all the days of your life. Sanctification, I got it. Protection, I got it. Oneness and unity, I've got it. I've got it all taken care of. When you feel like you're stressed and don't know how to walk through life, it's okay. I've already been praying for you. You're going to walk through this storm. Even if I have to come get you and hold you up by your hand, I'll walk with you through this storm. And I'm doing all of this so that you may come to a place of a revelation of God's glory in your life. 
Father, I want to thank you that intercession and prayer is going up before your throne right now for us, for all of those who need it. As they cry out and say they need you, Lord, you are already giving them the answer. Father, we love you. And we thank you that we can honestly say that because you love us, well, we have hope. We have faith. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you're glad about that, say amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm glad I got to see you today. God bless everybody. We hope you have a blessed week. We love you. We're praying for you. God bless you.